You're watching Throttle House. I'm Thomas. And I'm James. No goats? No goats. No. The Challenger, the Mustang, and the Camaro. A more iconic trio there is not. And this is the last year all three can face off as new models. Seen here in their highest naturally aspirated output V8 forms, each of them is equipped with a manual transmission and rear wheel drive. The Camaro, an LT1, is in its lightest and lowest drag 455 horsepower form. And it's here thanks to the lovely people at Grimsby Chrysler. And then there's the Challenger, the wide body scat pack. Together, these are both formidable enemies for Ford's newest Mustang to face, which today has been graciously lent to us from a subscriber's collection and has been delivered to our track with extreme care by Safe Auto, along with another equally menacing machine that will appear a bit later. Let's do this. Okay, I am piloting the Dark Horse. In the Challenger, we have our friend Jeremy, who's borderline pro drag racer. Uh, we don't have Carsten because he just got married. Oh, can I get an F in chat? Uh, he's on a well-deserved honeymoon. So, Dark Horse, horsepower leader, not the heaviest. I feel like I got this. I feel like I got this. All manuals. It's in the traction. It's all in the traction. adrenaline, losing traction. I'm a father now. I can't be doing that anymore. Let's do it again. It's embarrassing. I tried my best. I might have, the adrenaline might have put me in a Katy Perry mood. I, I maybe, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Quick shifts, everything was fast. Fantastic, yeah. Yeah, okay. This is a riot in a straight line. No, they are, yeah. A the, the, riot. The, the GT was honestly the very fun. The vibrations through the clutch, the, yeah. the feel of the engine through the... <laughs> These are great, honestly. Like, this is actually a very quick car. And then the Challenger? The Challenger was, you know, I, I, I just took him in the end. Yeah. But, uh, it wasn't much of a shakedown, though, was it? it uh, not, much of a, not much of a shakedown. Not a shakedown. <laughs> I mean, it did the quarter mile in the time that you can say Dodge Challenger Two. 392 Two wide body. Wide body scat pack. Scat pack. Last, last call, call shakedown. Shake, shakedown. That's its quarter mile time. Yes, quarter mile. <laughs> let's, uh, let's do the roll. Yeah. Settle this. Okay. I'm thoroughly impressed with that. It is a seriously quick car, honestly. Yeah. Get in here. Let me show you what a real pony car is okay, like on the track. Okay, okay. All right, so 
Things we haven't mentioned yet. Yep. Dark horse. For our bumpy track, this comes standard with Magna Ride. That's a big deal. Hey? Yeah. Oh my god, there's a lot of grip, isn't there? Oh, it's louder than oh, oh, that's some good brakes. God, the brakes are ridiculous. Oh, sounds great. Oh sounds great. Okay, anyway, let's take a look at what the Dark Horse actually is. Think of it as a heavily modified Mustang GT. It does have a power increase to 500 horsepower, which is achieved by wielding the piston connecting rods from the GT500. But really, it's the other stuff that separates a dark horse from a regular run-of-the-mill Mustang. For instance, it is the only way to get the snappier, more satisfying and confidence-inspiring six-speed Tremec manual transmission in a new Mustang. There's also specialized cooling systems for nearly everything. It has unique chassis tuning, larger sway bars, beefed up front shocks, fatter brakes, lightweight materials, and gloriously sticky tires, which get even larger and stickier if optioned with the handling package, which this one has. That also awards it stiffer springs and that monstrous gurney flapped wing on the back, which might have hurt it in the straight line test, not that it mattered, but for spirited street and track driving, all these changes should make the dark horse shine. Or not shine. If stay in the shadows, maybe, because it's dark. I don't know what to say. So this has so much more than so the much GT more. that we drove. It does make it very expensive. Very expensive. <laughs> the, this Tremac transmission, it's, yeah. it's a highlight. It's a highlight. I love the shift knob. The shift knob is great. I think the blue stitching everywhere, the blue on the Recaros. The I, honestly, I love the interior. This it says Dark Horse right here. It says Dark Horse in the sill. The steering time. wheel looks so cool too. I yeah. love it. We've had time to get used to this interior. I, I, I'm starting to really like this. I really do like the this. The interior? Yeah, I love the graphics. Yeah, no, it's fine. I, I the just, visibility. I just wish that it had a normal gauge cluster. Just give it a normal gauge cluster. <laughs> there it is. Atta boy. <laughs> yes. Uh, these tires are much grippier than the ones. Yeah, yeah, it's not as easy to just get in, no. It feels fast. Oh, there's so fast. much grip in the corners. It's ridiculous. Oh, and the brakes. Oh, oh my f Jesus. I was genuinely not ready for that. I, I was like, oh, this is gonna be funny. We're gonna have our faces where... That was, what the f Serious car. All right, Serious let me car. drive. All right. All right. It does make you wonder what that GTD is gonna be like. Oh, that GTD isn't gonna feel anything like this. That is a ground up race car. No, I know, but it's I'm gonna all... feel so much sharper. But doesn't this already feel so much better than the GT? So much better. So much better. Seriously. There we go. There we go. Nice. Okay. So it'll do it. I like that better than the automatic. The automatic, because... Well, that was also just the GT. That was, yes. Well, it, it was just the GT. You got 14 horsepower more on tap here. This car with this manual feels overall like the what it was meant to be, right? Big claim, big claim. It's just it just feels. I, I don't think the 10 speed is the move it, unless you unless you are competing yeah. in drag times. Just get the manual because there's so few of these left. And even if you don't have the Tremec, even though I don't actually like the whole manual experience of this car compared to the Camaro. Really? I still think that it's better well, I think to it's get the manual. As good, if not better. I love the manual experience in this car. Do you? Yeah. I find the clutch, clutch to be a bit gooey. No, I don't mind it. I don't mind it. No, this is, this is, uh, oh my this God. Has been, this has been the riot on track that I wanted the GT to be. the GT performance package sort of disappointed was it wasn't the PP2 it was more of a PP1 and yeah. as a result it's lap time let itself down massively. very badly I'm very curious what the dark horse can do well let's take a look all 
Alright, let's take a look at the fastest lap in the Dark Horse, which obviously was done at the beginning of the day before we courted those Pirellis. Now, this is a beast that needs to be wrestled with. There's nothing delicate about the way you have to drive it, but if you play by its rules, it's very, very quick around a track, especially with those crazy sticky track tires. Speaking of which, they added just enough heft to the steering that I felt a bit more confident on the front end compared to the GT. But, sadly, the steering and chassis communication in this is still a far cry from any Camaro. However, the Magna Ride is fantastic, and all of those track-specific chassis modifications paid off, because this dark horse was absolutely glued to our track. This should be a quick lap time. Russell Day! Russell Day! Look! Look what we brought! Oh uh, yeah. It's a Mark 1! It brought a Mark 1. Um, I did a lap time in that. You did do a lap time. Yeah. I have no idea what the lap times are. He has, as usual, he has no idea. Um, so before we, before I tell you this lap time, should I just kind of walk you through the Mark 1? Because it was interesting. So why has this not got a lap time before? Well, because Ford wouldn't let us. They wouldn't let us do a lap time. Oh, so yeah. by the very kind graces of an owner, we have a Mach 1 here years later to give you a lap time. Um, now, the Mach 1. This is a actually a genuinely fantastic track car. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Tires are super sticky. It's on cup twos, right? It feels very, very confident in the corners. There's, a, there's this kind of settledness to it in high speed corners that I really enjoy. And the steering, honestly, I don't find to be worse than the new one at all. Even with all their new with all the new upgrades, upgrades and, and everything. Yeah. I, I, it's, it's a, I can see how it's a little bit gooier, but the weight is really confident, and I've got, it's not nearly as good as a Camaro, but I got just enough feedback that I was able to figure out what the front tires are doing. And honestly, it's so fast through the corners. It really, really is. Well, this is a 21, mm -hmm. and they had the 480 horsepower. Yes. It was a year later, they lost 10 horsepower. <laughs> so this is the best Mark this 1. This is the best Mark yeah. 1. All right, Dark Horse. This yeah. is the successor to the Mark 1. Well, let's do this lap time first. Okay. We'll go in order chronologically. Okay. Okay, you ready? Yeah. So, looking at the leaderboard. You're looking at the leaderboard. That did a 1. Hang on. I, so it should be ahead of the G, PP2 GT yes. of this gen. Yes. Yes. So my guess is 1 12 20. 1 11 31. Wow. Yeah. So that's right up there with the SS1 LE. Yep. It's a very genuinely, fantastically great around the track car. It's not, it's not as fun or engaging as an SS1 LE. It doesn't communicate nearly as much, but it is, I think, the, the perfect version, other than the GT350, of a naturally aspirated S550 chassis. Did that make high sense? High praise, high okay. praise. That's a big time. That's a great time. And, the, and it is faster than the GT500, but the GT500 that we drove did not have the carbon fiber track pack. Yeah, it didn't have the cup twos. It didn't have cup twos. Right. And cup twos, well, sticky tires in general, are everything. As you are about to Dark discover off. when we look at these, which has a Trofeo RS, which is the equivalent of what would be a cup two R. Yes. That was a lot of boring tire talk, but unfortunately <laughs> it, it, it matters, basically. So, the Dark the, Horse. The Dark Horse. So, the preface to this is that the GT didn't disappoint us, the new one, but it wasn't huge. It was it was slower than the PP2. No, it didn't disappoint us, but it did disappoint us. It was oh. it was basically just a PP1. <laughs> yeah, it's, it and wasn't. it was just grouped into a performance pack. It just wasn't. So that it was in the 114s. Enough. No. Tell me it's at least a second quicker. Is it Mark 1 level? Okay, so the Mark find 1. Find out next week. Oh, the no, Mark find, 1 did a what? Find out. <laughs> next week. No, you find out next now. time on Dragon Ball Z. 111 <laughs> 30. This did a 1. Ten. Wow! No. Twenty-two. I did not. I thought you were going to come at me with like a one thirteen. It's a piece of crap. No, that's properly. It, that's fast. in line with the M two CS. Yes. Yes. Wow, and almost M five CS. Yeah. Like genuinely. Well, first of all, waiting for waiting. Tra <laughs> Trofeo RSs are 
ridiculously I don't sticky. I think we've ever experienced them before. Uh, no, or no. But, all? but I, the mid corner grip, I was like, the first corner, I was like, oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is gonna be quick. Um, but this car, I had to, I had to absolutely manhandle it. Right. This one, actually, for your information, has the rear seat delete. Yes, that's unfair. I don't, think, is, I don't think you can get that on this yet. Maybe not. They did that to honor the GT 350R. Right, right, right. With that one. That car felt way lighter than this one. Right. Way lighter. And I will say that it was very obvious in the tire pressures. Over the course of a lap and a half, I gained ten. PSI all the way around the car. From the weight. From the weight. If you put these tires on that car, I am confident that it would beat this time. Interesting. Right? But this car really had to manhandle it. And for some reason, the Tremec in this one compared to the Tremec in this one, nowhere near. I was, had a really hard time getting into gear. It didn't feel as sharp. The wow. clutch wasn't as confident. That one, I could slam through the gears. This one felt like- Is it like, possible that because this is brand new and this has seen some mi like hard miles? It's possible it's been worked in a little bit more. Yeah, the Just give us some benefit bit, of the doubt. Yeah. Because otherwise, this is a performance packaged dark horse. It's about as serious as you can get. Yeah. It's got the fixed larger rear wing. Yep. It's got the big fat tires, 305s on the front. Yep. It's got notorious BLU Brake car, Brembo Sorry, brake cars. They call them notorious blue. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. It has a front facing horse, yeah. which I quote This is the first time for Mustang we've ever had a forward facing horse. It's aggressive, a bit sinister, and it's coming from the shadows head on to win. You the one on the side. Th this one facing you, yeah. 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 I don't know what it's winning because these two are about to not exist. So, right, yeah. yeah. And also, this from the shadows thing is a bit weird. Like, yeah, yeah, turn yeah. a light on in the factory. Yeah, it's pretty and, easy. And then it won't. Look. They have like industrial lighting. Like, they're running <laughs> LEDs these days. I do love how the blue clashes with the blue. <laughs> so, yeah. so, this is in vapor blue. This yeah. is the same blue we tested the GT in. This can be had in a special four dark horse premium only ember blue, ember which is blue. what it was marketed at, which has yeah. like some special sort of. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. like that color. I, like I kind of wish we had it in that. But, yeah. This is, gets the mascara of the dark horse to complement the more aggressive. What's mascara? It sounds like a racetrack in Italy. They don't call it that. What, what's mascara? Oh, mascara. Mascara. You made it sound so cool. It's the, <laughs> the stuff that ladies put on their eyes. Right, October okay. 31st. Uh, we got the black <laughs> decals. So and on the back, yeah. on the back, we've got a slightly different race diffuser, darkened tips, and then obviously that front facing dark horse, Bojack horse. Oh, yeah. No, 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 listen, this is a great looking car and I don't care what anybody says, the, the, the guys that, yeah, we have them side by side here, honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's nothing in it for me. No. There isn't. I, I like the, the two headlights, I will say on that, and the styling of the Mach 1 specifically, but the front end of this looks great. I you know, think it's, it's cool. I wasn't I, sure about this in the photos, it's fine in, in person. No, this is, this is a great looking car. I, I can see how people complain about the weird angular tail light thingy. Yeah. It's a bit strange, but they had to do something different. After all, it is fundamentally the same car. <laughs> I, I can't believe the lap time. No, yeah, the lap time is very good. All of the things together, they did the right stuff with this one. And it's just so crazy when you think about it. We, ha we just had the GT around here. The difference in lap time Four that, seconds. that tires, some you know, tweaks to suspension and no. aero and stuff makes is crazy. It's crazy the difference. No, this is this is a great car. I really like it. I think I prefer driving. I prefer driving this one. Yeah. But with the rear seat delete, that's probably a little bit unfair, right? Which would you prefer, the the white cue ball in that or the uh, titanium blue? In I'll that? do the cue ball. The shifter. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because that one won't won't. Uh, These are all Tremec won't gearboxes. Won't burn the way. crap out of your hands when you get into it in the summertime. I've been living with this. Yeah. I felt a little bit obnoxious. With the stripes, it doesn't bit, match me at all. A little all. bit nauseous? Obnoxious. Oh, all the above. Um, it's not my, I got out of an MX-5 into this, and I was like, <laughs> I'm, uh, who's the guy from The Simpsons? I'm in danger. <laughs> <laughs> that was Ralph. What, that's, yeah, yeah, Ralph. Yeah. That's what it felt like. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, we're saying goodbye to these two. Only no, Dodger is celebrating it with the longest name of all time. Yeah, uh, yeah, one more time. Let's do it for the. Let's well, do it for everyone. Before this, we had the Mercedes AMG AMG GT63 four door. Four Matic plus all wheel drive, yeah. Yes. This is the, the Dodge Challenger yeah. RT 392 Scat Pack Wide Body Last Call Edition Shakedown. <laughs> You go to a car meet and say, what car do you drive? Oh, hold on. How, how long how you much, got? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got a lunch in like six hours. <laughs> yeah. uh, but yeah, still absolutely 
the muscle car here. It feels completely different to these three. Oh, it's not even in the same, it shouldn't even be in the same category. No, really. it's big yeah. floating sofa. Yeah. It's, in the morning, this spins out. Like if someone accidentally gets in this after an all wheel drive GT, they'll just yeah. die. No, I like it. I like it for that reason. It's yeah. big and it's dumb and it's dangerous. And then the Camaro we say goodbye to. Yeah. So. It's very sad. I really do like these cars very, very much. That's our current champion. Yeah. Dark Horse. Well, it's just one by default as of next year. But has it earned the right to be the only one left? Answer, yes. At least by that lap time. No, it's still not as engaging to drive as the Camaro, and it won't make you laugh quite like the Challenger. But by throwing all the performance upgrades at it, Ford have made the Dark Horse a true performance car, one that can somehow go toe-to-toe -to -toe with BMW's CS offerings on our track. And a premium Dark Horse starts about the same price as a BMW M2, and this also has two screens stuck together in the interior, and four seats, and it has more power, a better lap time, a better manual transmission, a more charismatic, naturally aspirated engine, and to our eyes, and all those that can see, it's better looking. So, is it expensive? Yeah, but maybe it's right where it belongs. Or maybe everyone's gone insane. Either way, the Dark Horse should not be underestimated. Thanks for watching, and thank you to Michelin for providing tire replacements.